Hello and welcome to a tutorial where I will show you how to heavily reduce the bones so that you can now fit within the constraints of the new rules that VRChat is enforcing where public avatars cannot have more than 30 dynamic bone transforms. Uh, now, as you're seeing here on screen, uh, this is a really old model of mine from my world and every single circle you see here is a dynamic bone transform. This model is one of the most offending models in my world in terms of models that need to be optimized. So as of right now, I believe it's at around 230 transforms. So I need to reduce this heavily. So I'm gonna head over to Blender and show you guys how to do that. So now that we're in Blender, you'll see that there's tons of bones. And I'm also using my eye tracking software so that you can see where I'm looking at all times. Now the first thing I want to do is I want to go into cats here and I want to open up the model options panel so that I can see the merge weights button. Now the way I do this is I'm going to hit start pose mode and this will let me select bones in blue here. So I'm going to start with this sleeve here and so I'm going to select every single end bone and hit merge bones. So what that does is it takes the bone weights of those and puts them into this one as well. So they both share that. Because in the end, I want to make this sleeve to be only one dynamic bone if possible. So um, I'm going to basically grab every single one of these bones now that is on this part and merge those into the sleeve bone. Next, I'm going to work on the hair so the hair is usually the biggest offender as well as dresses in terms of the bones these days from what I've seen. So what we want to do is I'm going to start with all the top bones that are attached up here. I'm going to highlight all of those. I'm going to rotate this so you can kind of see that's obviously where they all will pivot off of. So we will want to keep all those bones. So let's see here going to exit pose mode. I'm going to select the back hair root from before and I'm going to hit shift E to pull out a bone and I'm going to hit middle mouse button so it comes out at a specific angle so it's going straight back. Then I'm going to select that bone, go to the bone tab and disconnect it this will allow me to pull it out like this and I'm going to want I want the hair to eventually only be two bones so I'm going to pull one more out and do the same thing I just changed the uh, tail and the head to zero on the X so that it's centered as well so I'm going to lower this one down to more the reason they're so far out is just so I can get a better visualization of the way they're parented. So now that I have our, my bones made here, I'm going to name this one Back Hair 1. I'm going to name this one Back Hair 2. But it does look like there's already bones with those names, so I'm going to actually have to change it to something else. So I'm going to put an underscore, so it's going to be back underscore hair two. And this one will be the same, but one. All right, and make sure to hit enter when you type those in. So now I'm going to move on to showing you how to parent these to these new bones and then merge the weights. All right, so I'm going to start by selecting all of these bones right here, as well as this layer. And then I'm going to click this one as my last one while holding shift, then hit control P, change offset. So what that does is it connects all those bones that are here to be parented there. So that when in pose mode, the rotation of this now is affected by that. And then next, since I chose to do this layer here, I'm going to merge those weights into the bone up here. 
Now this bone is going to get all the other ones merged into it. So I'm going to select all these bones here. And then control P, keep offset. And then I'm going to merge those in. And finally, I will move these bones into place around the where the original bones were. So this one goes here. And this one shall go here. Now I'm going to go into pose mode and test this here. So then the hair is still pivoting the same way as before. It's just now one bone instead of 30 plus, as well as there. Now, sometimes the hair might be really sharp uh, where it's rotating. So the way I'm going to fix that is I'm going to click on the body mesh over here while in object mode and go here. And this is where we're going to see those two bones we just made. And I'm going to go down here and switch to paint mode. So this is the way the model is affected by the bone. So right now that red is 100% solid, meaning it is 100% affected. So I'm going to lower how effective this is by going to the tools here and clicking on levels uh, when in weight paint mode. So I'm going to lower that down so that it's not as harsh. Let's try around here. So we want a bit of yellow, but right before it turns orange. So I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to select the back hair too and hit the levels button again because it remembers the settings. So both of these now are much lighter. Uh, to finish it off, I'm going to click on the blur tool, zoom out a good bit, and I'm going to blur the edge somewhat. And I'm going to do that with the other bone as well. Now, after you do that, to avoid this issue where that blur uh, blurred onto the shoulder as well, to avoid that, you while in this mode for weight painting, you want to hit the clean button and then increase that a couple digits until you see it start to affect. So for this one, I'm going to do around 50. And then I'm going to click on this one and hit hit clean again. So now when I select it'll select just the hair because it cleaned the vertices that aren't touched. Uh, that's the method I use. So now that that's smoothed out, we can go back to object mode and go into pose mode and we can see that this is now a bit smoother because it you can see the curve is a lot less sharp because of that. So that'll help with the physics in the uh, Unity engine. I'm going to now save and I'm going to do everything that I just did from the one side and I'm going to duplicate it on this side and come back and move on to the hardest part which is going to be the dress. All right, I've now saved. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish up the hair real quick before moving on to the dress. So for the hair, honestly, most of this here doesn't even need to move. Um, because we're only allowed two colliders now. So having a collider in the head to prevent the hair from bouncing back and clipping is not so simple. So I'm just going to merge all this hair, all these hair bones. In fact, it's probably better if I go into here and find the hair this way. So I'm just going to go for the front bone and select every single thing. And merge. I'm just going to keep doing that until I've eliminated everything. All right, so the front hair is completely merge. So now I'm going to take a look at the sideburns here. I'm going to keep those. So I'm going to merge just the top part of the bones here. And keep these origin points in the middle because it's best to keep the bones that are kind of in the middle so that you can get a, a better rotation 
uh, for the physics. So now I'm going to root this one, parent it, and then merge the one here. So now it's just one bone for this area here and one for that side. Now I'm going to move on to the dress. Now we're going to move on to the dress. So I'm going to start with the ribbon here. It's not really necessary. So I'm going to click on those bones here and just merge those into the body. All right. So the way to, or the best way to merge the dress is going to be, we're going to find the ends of the legs. Uh, let me do the full body fix here first. This will cause the tips of the leg bones to have this extra bone for full body fix. And I'm going to click on this one and hit Shift E again to pull out a extra bone. And I'm going to name this left underscore dress. Now let me disconnect that so I can drag it out like so. This will help me find it. Now the best way to describe this is we're going to select all the bones on the one side of the model. That will be for the left side because when you rotate it would move as if it's moving with the leg. So I'm going to go into this mode, grab all those, and reparent it to this. This is more of a test at the moment, so we're going to see how that's going to affect the rotation. So now I'm going to select the leg bone here, rotate, and as you see, it's moving with the dress here. Of course, it's not perfect. There is a bit of clipping up here, so we could fix that later, or we can test something else. So. I'm going to go back until these are not parented anymore. So now I'm going to select this layer. I'm going to parent this layer into it instead and see if that makes it look better. And as you can see here, it's, it is better. Um, so I'm going to do that on the other side as well. Let me just grow in here and Drag another bone out, disconnect it, and name it right dress. Now to make this bone and this bone symmetrical, hit spacebar and type in SYM to bring up symmetrize, and you click it, and now both bones are exactly the same. You can swap in which way it symmetries them by doing this option down here. Once you have these bones symmetrical, I'm going to now parent everything on this side exactly the same as I did over there. By hitting P. Now, here is the thing. As you have noticed most likely, there is a bone going straight down the center in both the front and the back. However, we have two legs. So, the way I solve that is, first let me grab all these bones here. I'm going to clean up this area some by merging all these bones, which are rooted to the hip, and they won't have physics anyway, so they're going to be rooted that way, and so I'm going to hit merge weights now to clean those up. So we still have two more to go. All right, so now this will be easier to notice. So the bones in the center here Actually, it might be better if we, yeah, we clean up more bones here first. So I'm going to grab the tips down here of the dress. Be sure not to select the leg bones. I'm going to change to this mode to maybe give a better visual here. So we got that layer. We're actually going to grab this layer too. And we're going to merge those in. Then we're going to grab this layer and this layer. And 
and merge those in. Now I'm going to exit pose mode. Now this is where we're going to duplicate the center bone so that we can have one, one that we can bind here and one we can bind here so they share the weight in the center. So to do this, we're going to select every center bone. And then I'm going to grab those and click this bone. Actually, I'm going to click all three of these bones here. And click this last bone here. And I'm going to parent them to it. And then merge them into it so that I have one bone here and one bone here for the entire front. I'm going to highlight both of them and we're going to hit shift D which will duplicate that bone but we'll do not left click you want to right click so it snaps back to exact location. You'll notice now that when you click here it'll select between the two bones one having a 001 after it that's the duplicate. So we're going to name this L for left on both the duplicates. Then we're going to go into the bone weights under body and find the bone that matches this one right here. So this is going to be skirt one underscore one. Once we locate that, I believe it's that one. One, nine, one. Okay, so we're going to duplicate this one by going to this little down arrow, hitting copy vertex group. And we're going to do the same thing with nine, five. And then we're going to change the word copy to L. What this does is now when I go in here into the bones and select the L, got a pose mode it'll affect the bone as well. So I'm going to select the left one and we're going to bind that to the left leg. And then we'll do the same with the other side, which you can name to right side if you want. So now if I go in here to rotate the leg, you'll notice that side of the dress goes with that leg and the other side goes with this leg. thing is this is still a lot of bones so I'm gonna minimize that even more by taking this layer here the second layer down actually yeah we'll take this second layer down select it the whole way around and then we'll merge those weights. Now next we're going to minimize this further by clicking on these little bones here which are for the front of the dress. It's basically a kimono over a dress. So we're going to select these. Actually, yeah, we're going to basically select the ones that are right beside it and parent them. to the closest bone. And then you just keep hitting control P to do that and keep offset. I'm going to keep doing that until I've done that the entire way around. The reason I'm doing this is so that I'm going to select the outer layer and merge it into the inner layer because they both move at this in the same position. They're like so close to each other, so it's uh, it's just unnecessary.
Once I finish here, I'm going to select every outer bone and just merge them all in at once. Alright. So now we have much less bones. However, it's still not clean enough. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to that middle bone here. And we're going to move the left one a bit over to the left and the right one a bit over to the right. So we're going to take that left one and merge it here. Actually, we're going to take both these bones here and merge it to this bone. And we'll do the same on the other side. All right, so that minimized that a good deal. However, down here, the same thing is going to need to be done for that layer as well. So now I'm going to merge those together. And we can do the same in the back here with this one, this one. So um, I'm going to duplicate the same process I did on the front, by the way, when I duplicate the bone. I had, didn't do that in the back yet. So I'm going to move that over to the left some. I'm going to name that underscore left and underscore left. All right, I'm going to quickly merge the bone weights over uh, just like I did the front and I'll continue from there. All right, I've now merged the backbone and the front bone as well as minimize the amount of bones that are in the dress completely. So I went from about, oh, I'd say it looked like a good 70 or 80 and I've, I've gotten down to uh, a much lower number. So it looks to be about 12. So next step would be to grab those extra bones that I moved out here and I'm going to pull them in and drop them down to just below that extra bone so that now when I rotate the leg bone the dress moves with the leg There we go. All right, so now, now that that's all done, I'm going to finish up a little bit of uh, cleaning here, just making sure. So right here, I still need to get these bones back here at the chain. But here's the thing. So these chains, I'm not gonna add physics to. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to make it look like physics is affecting them by going into pose mode grabbing these bones and rotating them down. To give the illusion that gravity is affecting them, then I'm gonna apply pose mode. That'll, that'll permanently put them there. Then I'm going to select all those bones and merge them. So that, that mesh, they're always affected by gravity. All right, it looks like there's not much more we can minimize on this model. I've merged the front. I've, uh, I've actually, there seems to be a bit of extra bo uh, bones here. So I might as well show you how I would fix this as well. So I'm going to apply, not apply wrist pose, but I'm going to merge weights so that we have only one pair of bones for each breast. I'm gonna move those forward so that this, the base part is oh, pretty much centered. And now I'm going to click on the body and go to weight paint mode and find 
that uh, those particular bones here. So there's the breast. Now here's the thing. So uh, with most MMDs, they'll come extremely red, which means that with the dynamic bones component, it'll move as if it's a solid object, basically. So the way to fix this would be doing the same thing as earlier with the levels. Um, so I'm going to lower that down until there's just a tiny bit of yellow. And you can even expand the range out a little bit. So we want to be right around there. I'm going to apply that to the other one as well. And this should uh, make it look a lot better in game. So let me just blur this too. Actually, before you blur it, you might want to go to options and hit mir X mirror. So, because sometimes this allows what you did on one side to affect the other. And I'll just finish it off by running the clean tool on both sides. And this shouldn't allow me to pull it in Unity. So I'm going to move everything over to Unity and show you the last little step. So now we're in Unity here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys the difference. So this has the old setup with a bunch of bones. So now I'm going to go to the new setup and add a dynamic bone to her. The settings I usually use for this configuration uh, after you merged all the bones is I go with 0 0.9, 0 0.1, 0 0.9, 0 0.9, and then I adjust from there. So first we'll do the uh, we'll do the hair, I believe, would probably be best. Because everything's under one bone here, the uh, head tip root. And now I'm going to increase the radius to give you a better idea here of how many bones we're working with. So this one is only four transforms. As you can count here. Let me make those bigger. So we got one for each side, two for the back. Now I'm going to enter play mode and show you the difference here. Now it's definitely not going to flow the same way because it's much less uh, transforms to be moving around. However, it still moves nonetheless. And you can adjust your settings how you see fit. That's a little too much. Which is why I usually go with the settings I, I showed you at the beginning here. All right. We'll just leave it like that here. And then you'll do the same thing to all the other areas. So I'm just going to copy and paste the same thing. Then I'm going to go to the leg bone, grab the leg, put it in here, and make sure to exclude the knee and the extra leg bone. Now I'm going to enter play mode. And you'll see that the leg the dress does now have physics. Um, and I'll do the same thing on the other leg. Let me do that now. Paste this new. Do the knee and then the leg number two. And then while I'm here, I'm going to do the same thing with the chest. I will add colliders for those, but you cannot have more than two colliders, so you'd need to basically have one for each hand. And uh, you can have them touch the hair and dress, however, the bones are so far apart 
on the dress and the hair that it might be pointless. So I can also add that to the sleeves too after this, but you basically get the gist of it at this point. So I'm going to go in here and show you one more time the difference. So this one has way less bones. It's definitely underneath a 30. The physics still work, as you can see. And then this one This one has way more bones. You can even feel the lag when I move it compared to the other one. And that's part of why VRChat has ran so bad and why they're enforcing the rules they are right now. So I hope this tutorial helped you. Um, so basically the idea is you get the dynamic bone transforms down to as low as you can. Uh, for example, if you just have long hair, you can totally do it within two bones. You don't need 40, 50, 60 to make it look good. Um, I can understand, you know, that you want to be able to touch it like it's flowing hair, but sometimes we have to sacrifice things to get that extra FPS. And if everyone were to do this from now on, uh, not just public avatars, it would really help VRChat. So thank you for watching.